Right then, on to the next Mark V video. There's been a few that have all been mixed together, so hopefully it makes sense to people watching them in order. Now the suspension's all done. The next step, while we wait for the brake hoses and everything to be uh, organised, that's going to be next week now, so we're going to uh, do things a little bit differently. So the cool and the bodywork side of things. So obviously this is a Mark V Golf, it's got a Mark VI front end. So while we've got a full Mark VI Golf to nick all bits from, it makes sense to start offering up some of the uh, Mark VI stuff. So the front end on this is a little bit damaged in places. So it looks like it's been maybe whacked a couple of times on the front end, not very heavily, but enough to cause some trouble. So we've got the full front end, everything just ripped off this Mark VI Golf. And uh, we're just gonna get all the radiator pack and everything all fitted into it, make sure it all fits how we want it. So while we're talking about that, I thought it'd be fitting to talk about the cooling system and what we've got planned. So we've got dark side, S3 intercooler. This is the 57 mil sort of standard version, not the bigger one, because the bigger one's a bit heavier and this is not running stupid power. It's not as critical for us to uh, have that big intercooler if you ask me, but we'll see. Aluminium radiator, that's just so you've not got the plastic end caps. And this is, this in theory should just be a straight bolt on. We're not using any custom fabricated parts. The standard pipe work and everything should just go straight onto it because you don't want to have everything custom really, it's just a pain in the ass. So that means we can use our off the shelf boost pipe set up. There's no term out of ordinary there. So again, we're not going to need to have loads of custom stuff on van. If we have a problem, the standard off the shelf components will work. We've got our oval port oil cooler kit. That is probably going to end up going in one at side grills rather than putting it in front of intercore art radiator. So we'll see how that goes. And then, as usual with our project cars, we're going to, re going to use Peerberg CWA 400 water pump. These are the same water pumps that like M Sport and places like that use on their World Rally cars. So we know they're a good item. Um, we don't have any problems with these on our cars. So that, obviously, I've just realised I'm missing, I'm missing a component here. So, stop a sec, I'll be back. So, back again. These are what I forgot. So this, we use a normal timing belt kit. This replaces the water pump. So the seal that's in the bottom end set when we build the engine for the water pump, that goes in there. And then this is a pulley. Took some finding this bugger as well. This pulley bolts on here because the water pump's obviously normally driven by the timing belt. I had to find a pulley that had the same tooth pattern, belt pattern and width as the standard timing belt. And then, genuine Volkswagen one. And then we had to machine this blank and offset it so that it still tensioned the belt the same. So that replaces the water pump. That's obviously the external water pump. And because on this oval part engine, you're putting the water pump before the engine as such. Normally when it's in the engine on the timing belt, the thermostat's in front of it and the hot circuit that goes around, which we'll try and put a, a diagram up of what the hot circuit's like. The hot circuit is behind the water, uh, behind the thermostat, so when the hot circuit's going around, that then opens the thermostat and away you go. If you're putting the water pump to the other side, you're pushing in against the, you'd be pushing in against the thermostat. You can't do that because it's never going to open and you're going to kill your water pump. So this replaces the thermostat housing on the oval port engine. We then have to weld a barb on it wherever we want to send it down to the water pump. So literally that goes into the engine and that joins to it. the water pumps generally like that. So that pipe joins the outlet joins to the inlet of the engine. The water pump's normally, like imagine that would be the, the water pump's like here at the back of it, but that's blanked off now. So then what we have to do 
is use one of our external thermostat housings and put, which is missing an o-ring, and we need to put the thermostat in that at the other side of the engine, so on the outlet of the engine, and then we put our own little hot circuit that opens the thermostat. So you're completely re-engineering our water system work, so it can be a bit of a pain. And obviously, when you've done all this, this is electronic, you've got to control it somehow. So that's what this is for. Tiny CWA 400 version from Tech Emotive. Thomas, really nice, helpful guy. So what this basically does, the little controller, which I have to really rip it out of the bag. This controls the water pump and it's got some really nice presets and some really nice features in it and it's really well packaged as well as you can see oh dear where's our George when you need him to rip into it he can up and stuff so just mount this in the car run the wire into the pump and to the controller and to the sensor the external sensor that you put in and then this literally lights up when the engine gets warmer so you set it to whatever temperature you want it to be at. When it gets warmer, it, um, the pump speed increases. Then when it, if it gets five degrees over what you set it, it starts to flash and tell you that it's turned the fan on. And then when it's 10 degrees over and the fan's on and it's not cooling it down, it'll start flashing and telling you you've got a problem. So it's a good, it's a good way to keep an eye on your coolant temperature because you can't believe the gauges in these cars. The torque absolute rubbish, it'll be 120 degrees before it starts moving past 90. So, anyway, so that's the cool inside of things. Um, that should pretty much cover everything we need to do on this car. It, um, it's nothing out of the ordinary, it's all stuff we've done before, all tried and tested. So, we're not going to be second guessing it. We are going to then be a little bit more creative maybe if the car's competitive and it's worth spending some more time and money on because we're already way deep into it cost wise but we can start going down like touring car f1 so older f1 style radiator cars and intercooler cars like we've got on city go but that were more of a we couldn't get the airflow we needed this car we've got a nice big open front so we're not going to need anything silly and we don't want to make it expensive if we if we had a crash so that's the cooling stuff. We'll go on to bodywork next. So, the bodywork on this car, it's a little bit rough in places, but luckily you can buy everything you need um, in the aftermarket. There's a few pe people in the UK who do them. The originality of all this stuff was from Poland, I believe. So, you can buy it from Poland or you can buy it from here. The only thing and one of the reasons why I think the guys in the UK did, did what they've done, the front bumper's ridiculously expensive from Poland. Don't know why. It, um, dinner's here. We, um, it's absolutely ridiculously expensive for just the front bumper that's got some add-on arches. So what they do in the UK is fit this bumper, which is an aftermarket Golf R1. And that's, we've got this one from DM Auto Tele in Germany and now uh, I've never seen packaging like it ridiculously good and it comes with absolutely everything you could possibly need for your road car and it is a, it is a decent fit as well we've offered it up onto this Mark 6 and it, it, fit, it fit pretty nice obviously this is a race car so fitment isn't too big of an issue but it comes with all the little bits of grills and stuff like that and it's not fiberglass it's ABS plastic so you can have all these nice little fittings and screw holes and stuff. You're not having to tech screw stuff together like you would on a fiberglass one. Then the guys in the UK just put the wide arch extensions onto the end of this, which is what our bumper's got. So we... These are a few hundred quid. They're not ridiculous money. I think the bumper from uh, Poland's about a grand. So, ridiculous money. The only thing we will need to do is sort of splitter out for this, which you can get them. Uh, from a few different places like a big sort of motorsport splitter but they are quite low so I think for this car to start we'll just run it as it is see how we get on we have got a spoiler I don't know if it's here yet we probably have got it but I'll, I'll dig it out it's going to go on and obviously you don't want to put a spoiler on without a splitter or you end up with a bit of 
um, rear end pushing down and the front end lifting, but these cars are known to have a lot of rear end lift anyway. So having a spoiler and no sputter wouldn't be the end of the world, I don't think, but we'll see. I don't want to create understeer, trying to stop oversteer, and then what you end up doing is adding oversteering anyway because you, you don't want it to understeer, so we don't want to do that. Keep the car light, aerodynamic, and only do stuff that needs to be done. Um, so yeah, that's a bumper. Thank you to them for supplying it to us. Um, they got it to us pretty quickly. And then Scott's gone a little bit tarty, even though it's a race car, he's decided he wants uh, DRLs, which I can sort of half understand why he wants them, because when it's really miserable and drizzly and um, not the warmest, the cars with the DRLs really stand out, and obviously for our sponsors and suppliers and for us as a company, we want people to notice our car, and uh, especially if somebody's thinking of pulling in front of us and we're behind them, get out of his way. So, that's that. Um, this is an R32 rear splitter sort of bumper bottom. This is probably all going to end up cut out, so I'm not sure what Scott's thoughts are on why we've got this one. I think they're a bit deeper, maybe. Yeah, a bit different shaped. So we're going to be chopping that out. Centre exit exhaust, hopefully. And um, make ni a nice diffuser. But we'll probably wait till the car's done and laser scan underneath it if we can and get some like, fancy med that's actually aerodynamic. So that's that. I think this just come from eBay as well. Um, same as the headlight. So Daniel will put on who they're from if they, if they require a mention. From this other stuff here, scrappy looking bits. This is the heat shield that goes underneath, under the tunnel. We're going to reuse that because the exhaust makes the inside of the car ridiculously hot and there's no better way of insulating it than the factory components. So what we'll do, we'll use that, but we'll also put this stuff in between, so it's some like adhesive insulating heat shield and stuff, so it should make, it's not, and it's not heavy either, it's like a few grams, so that along with that should make it a little bit quieter in the car, a bit less resonant, which is not a big deal, but it can be, and stop the heat getting in because you'd absolutely sweat like mad. So then these bits as well, these are the aerodynamic bits that go under the car, so these are the wrong way around, but these are at the back and sort of flick the air around the rear axle. That's the idea, a bit of damage here, but it's not worse than what it's gonna get. So we're gonna put these back on, probably seal this bit back up because we'll be probably taking the fuel core off, I'm not too sure yet. Um, and then some other bits, some of the um, blue motion cars and stuff like that, they've got these things, which we'll put a picture of where they are on the car, but these go on the rear trailing arm. And for some reason, they superseded this part and it goes to one that goes on the spring seat, which is not, in my opinion, as aerodynamic. It just looks cheaper to produce. So we had to get these used, so they're a bit battered, but you can't buy them new anymore. But they're only a tenner each or something like that. So the idea is we all the factory, factory underneath stuff, because we, we can't, this is what I forgot to say really, we can't actually put any flat floor if we're going to run the track day championship. In the Super Cup we can, but obviously you'd have to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off if we're racing on the same day. So we're not going to, we're not going to do a full flat floor. We can do a diffuser, we can do a splitter, we can do a spoiler, but we can only have factory factory components from, um, from the underneath. So that's why we've got this stuff, just to help that a little bit. The underbody is where all the, all the effort should be put, in my opinion, on cars like this. Little spoiler, little splitter, little diffuser, but you can't really do much with them, you're limited. The underneath, if your factory stuff's good, then that's what you need to do. So they're the fixings for some of them, genuine stuff. And then the only other thing to mention, Mark 6 Golf boot uh, emblem, just because it'll look better than Mark V Golf one. It's not going to make it a, a Mark VI Golf, but Scott wanted it, Scott gets it. So, anyway, I think this will probably be a quick video. Whether we put some other stuff at the end of it, I'm not too sure. So, if this is the end, like the video, share it, subscribe, and hopefully it's not going to be too long before we're on track with this car.